Well, good morning. This is Dean Tinney. I'm coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas. Uh, we've been doing something uh, different on the channel of late. Uh, we have narrative lectures on various topics. And uh, one of those is uh, options. We have four lectures. Lecture one is nomenclature terminology. Lecture two is basic options. Lecture three is uh, stock positions plus options, positions, covered calls, uh, protective puts, um, short stock with a call, and then lecture four, which is advanced option strategies, straddles and spreads. And what I've been doing is pulling some of the strategy out there, make a shorter version of those strategies. And so in that regard today, we're gonna to be talking about don't hate the eight. There are eight series seven exam test questions on spreads that you need to be aware of on your test. And so I'm gonna go over those eight things in a more brief form than the narrative lecture, which is uh, lecture four found in the playlist. You can find that, that full-blown lecture in two places in the playlist, and this will probably show up in two as well. It's in the series seven exam lecture playlist where we give you all the series seven exams. And it's also found in a separate playlist on options called series seven uh, options lectures. So you can find it in two spots. All right, so let's get started on uh, the eight things you're held accountable for on a spread. So it's called a spread, by the way, because you're spreading the difference of the premiums. But first thing you have to be able to do on a spread is identify it. Now, even if that wasn't a test question, it is. But if you can't identify the spread, then you're kind of going to be stuck. And again, the way you identify that is you're long and short the same type of contract. As you know, you have two types of contracts, calls and puts. And so we have two versions of a spread. We have call spreads and we have put spreads. So that's how we identify the spread. Once we've identified it, even if that wasn't a test question I told you it was, and you know, we're kind of stuck. The next thing we got to be able to do on the second thing we got to be able to do on the test is determine whether it's a credit or debit spread. Credit means more money in than out, and debit means more money out than in. Uh, I'm going to run the menu on two spreads with you. No surprise, one credit, one debit, and show you how we're going to do that. Uh, the next thing we got to do, number three of the eight, is tell us tell them on the test, where do you want the contracts to expire? I want you want the contracts to be exercised. Now, good news, if you get this part down, you can rock and roll. Because if you get this part down, let me just get my annotation tool here. If you get credit, you'll know that it's expire and narrow. And if you get debit, you know debit exercise. Why? And that goes together all the time. So the third thing is expire or exercise. The fourth thing is, do we want the difference in the premiums to get smaller, narrower, or do we want the difference in the premiums to get larger, widen? For example, we established the spread for a net of six. That's what the spread is, the difference. It's kind of like a, a betting on a football game or a baseball game or a basketball game. When somebody says, what's the spread? They mean, what's the difference in the scores? You know, some people wanted to stay within the, the spread and some people went outside of the spread in terms of the two difference in the scores in that game. Same thing here. That's what we mean by here, the difference in the premiums. If it, the difference is net of six, do we want it to be nine or do we want it to be six? You know, if it was a credit, we want to get smaller. That means we can close it out and have uh, some money left over. Widen means we want to get larger. Net of six, we want nine. We can make three. That's the hardest part to get. Don't need to get it because that goes together all the time. The fifth of the eight things we got to be able to do is determine the maximum gain and number six, maximum loss. Now, good news for us, it always equals the difference in the strike. So the first spread I'm going to show you is a difference of 15. You know, the way I think of it is there's a floor and there's a ceiling. Now, there's only 15 uh, points to be made or lost. And if we get the credit, we know the balance is our uh, loss. And if we have the debit, we know the balance is our uh, gain. Now, if you don't get that, I'm going to show that to you. Then you're going to have to do some memory work, which... I just think it's a mess. In other words, if you don't get what I'm going to show you in the menu, then you're going to have to do some memory work. I would warn you that the, the less you understand options, the more memory work is going to be involved. The seventh thing we've got to be able to do is determine the break-even. You know, the break-even, kind of a couple of tricks. We said one trick is the gain and loss always equals the difference in the strikes. And the other trick is the break-even is somewhere in the range between the floor and the ceiling. I'm going to show that to you in just a sec. And we have two memory aid devices. One is Cal, call, add to the lower. If it's a call spread, we're going to take the lower strike. We're going to add the net premium. If it's a put spread, we're going to take the higher strike and subtract. So call, add to the lower, or push, put, subtract from the higher. 
And then the eighth and final thing we've got to be able to do on a, a spread is determine whether it's bullish or bearish. And the way we do that is the larger premium dominates the position. And you know the way we're going to do that is we know that lower strike calls always have a greater premium. So the lower strike call is, is going to be dominant. And we know that higher strike uh, puts are always dominant. Because higher strike puts always have the greater premium. OK, so let me show you how we're going to apply the uh, menu, the eight things you're held accountable for in an actual spread. So let me clean up my slide here. And Okay, so here's our first th uh, first spread. And here over on the side, you see we have the eight things that we're held accountable for. So uh, again, there's a lot of ways to go on options. I personally always like to have a, some kind of a process is always tell you that my uh, content is a buffet. Take what you like, leave what you don't. Uh, and what I like to do is I always like to say, okay, what am I looking at? I'm looking at here an obligation to sell. Uh, by the way, this is 10 contracts. Uh, I would do it on a point per share basis, but that's an obligation to sell the stock at the strike price. And you know, that's uh, if that was just the only thing I did, was that? Well, let's just get it over here. Now, as you recall from your basic options, If that's all I did, my uh, breaking would be 175 plus 12, 187. And, uh, you know, I would be uh, bearish. And what I would hope is that the Apple is 175 or lower, contracts expire, and I keep the money. Now, the problem with that position is that once it goes past, uh, let's see here, let's get a little closer. But, you know, at some point I'm going to have unlimited to get loss potential. There's my losses, right? And then, as I said, what I like to do is say, okay, what's the second, this top leg here? This is a choice, and this is the smart part, a choice to buy stock at the strike price. And so our first thing is, can we identify the spread? And it's a spread. The spread is when we're long and short, two different types of uh, contracts. So this is a call spread. The next thing we said we have to be able to do is identify whether it's a debit or credit. Now, the way we're going to do that, I like to use dollars out, dollars in. A lot of people like to do other things. But what I like to do is net the premiums. And so if we look at, let me get rid of this so I can see here. Uh, if we look at our three, let me get. that the three is dollars out. You know, you could do that or you could do a T, whatever works for you. And that's gonna be dollars in. And so here we've established a nine point credit. Again, don't put $9,000 here. I always do suggest you do things on a price per share basis. And we know that anytime we collect money, the best case is we're gonna to get to keep it. And so we have a credit, a credit spread here. So we've determined this is a credit because we have more money in than out. 
Uh, we want the contracts to expire so we can keep the money. So we've got our max gain. We want, uh, by the way, we just want an expire. Let's make a note there. We want the difference in the premiums to get smaller, narrow. We'll be right all the time, all the time. Uh, maximum gain. So again, here, what we want to do, and that's the whole point of a spread, is I'm just saying I want to play between here and here, and I don't want to play no more. So as you see here, I have a floor at 175, and I have a ceiling at 190. So all the action is going to take place between the strikes. All of the action is going to take place between the strikes. And so here, and I kind of warned you about this. If you don't get that, then you're going to have to memorize a lot of stuff. Uh, but here, let me just get this. So there's our. All that action is taking place between those two strikes. So that means there's 15 points to be made or lost. Let's see what size is wanting on here. So again, if we have 15 points, that's the difference in the strikes. Kind of a test taking trick. The gain and loss on the spread always equals the difference of the strikes. So there's 15 points to be made or lost. Of those 15 points, uh, I have spent or collected uh, nine of those. So as I warned you here, if you don't get that, uh, you know, nine plus something equals 15, ugh then what you got to do is memorize that the maximum loss in a credit spread is the difference in the strikes less than that credit. I just personally think that's a mental mess. I think it's easier to say nine plus something equals 15. Nine plus something equals 15. That something is six. Now, after you get the menu done, then you can think about once you get the eight done, this menu, then you can think about it and think, okay, well, worst case is I'm going to buy the Apple at 190, which I have a choice to do. I'm going to deliver 175. I'm going to lose 15 points. I got nine in my account already, so I lose six. So, you know, don't start thinking about it, though, until you get the menu done. You know, again, you don't have to do the menu I'm suggesting. But, uh, you know, I, you, know, you need some kind of a process. You know, there's other ways to do, lots of ways to do options. And just as long as you're getting the right answer, uh, that's fine. All right, so we are working our way through the eight things we're held accountable for, the eight test questions on a spread. We've identified it as a spread, long and short, the same type of option. We've de determined it's credit, more money in than out. We've determined we want the contracts to expire because if they expire, that's going to be bueno because that means we can keep the money. And we want the difference in the premiums to be smaller than nine, be smaller, narrow. Hardest part to get, don't need to get it. So we've uh, determined the maximum gain is the credit. You know, that's true of any option position when you collect money Best case is contracts expire, you keep the money. We determine the maximum loss, the break even. The next thing we got to do is break even. We got a mnemonic for that. Now, as we said, the break even is going to be somewhere uh, between this range. So, kind of a test taking trick. You should not give me any break even that isn't somewhere between 175 and 190, because that's the whole point. And we said that uh, of these numbers, we have one already. Oh, we have two actually now. We got the nine is the uh, gain. And we have uh, six as our maximum loss. So the break-even is somewhere between there. Now our mnemonic for break-even is Cal. And that stands for call add to the lower. Call add to the lower. Now it's in a call spread, in a call spread, 
we're going to add the net premium to the lower strike. So in this example, we're going to take the lower strike, which is 175. We're going to add the net premium, which in this case is nine. And we get our break even of 184. And we said it's got to be a number between those two numbers. You know, after you get the menu done, then you can actually kind of think about it and say, okay, well, 175 plus uh, 12, 175 plus nine is 184. So if I buy the stock at 184 and I deliver 175, I'd lose nine, I got nine, I break even. Nobody does things to break even. And the last thing we got to do is determine where do we want the stock in relationship to, where do we want the stock in relationship to this number? In other words, what we mean by that is this is a bullish or a bearish spread. And the way we do that, as we said, is the larger premium dominates. And so here, the larger premium is a short call. And so this is a, a bearish spread. All credit call spreads are, are bearish. And that's important. By the way, that gives us a 50-50 on the test. Let's just put that here. That's where we want that to be. So anywhere in there, let me just get my, my tool. And uh, even if it was missing the premiums, we could still figure out that this is a bear spread in its credit because we should know that lower strike call contracts always have uh, greater premiums. Okay, so we're looking at the eight things you're held accountable for on the test. Uh, we've identified this as a spread. We've determined it's a credit spread. We've determined we want it to expire and narrow. We've got our max gain, our max loss, our break even, and we've determined bullish or bearish. So those are the eight things you're held accountable for on a spread. All right, let's look at our, our next one. And again, these are not narrative lectures. These are, you know, just pulling a little bit to look at things. So, boom. Okay, so here's our next uh, spread. Here's our next spread. We're short 10 Apple, uh, September 190 calls at seven. And again, what I like to do, what Dean likes to do is untestable. But what I like to do is, okay, say, what am I looking at? And what I'm looking at is an obligation You know what? I don't uh, I'm going to show you a uh, let me see if I have that here. I just want to show you, I, you know, I'm trying to keep these short, so I don't want to show you the same thing, a call spread, a debit call spread. So let me just see if I got another one. There's our menu. There we go. I want to show you uh, a different version of this. So here we go. I want to show you a debit spread. Well, let me know. I got, you know, plenty of these to show you if you'd like to see them. Anyway, so what I like to told you I like to do, let me clean this up here first. Is uh, we're going to look at this and say, okay, what am I looking at? I'm looking at a choice to sell the stock, the strike price. And I'm looking at an obligation. buy the stock at the strike price. So, you know, we uh, like to get going there first, right? 
this is a put contract 175 or higher. The contracts expire. Let's get our eight things that we're held accountable for. Remember, we're talking about the eight test questions on spreads. And so what we're going to want to be able to do is identify it. We want to determine credit or debit. We want to be able to determine expire or exercise. We want to be able to determine narrow or widen. We want to be able to determine maximum gain, maximum loss. We want to be able to determine break even. And we want to be able to determine bullish or bearish. So those are the eight things that you're held accountable for on spreads. Don't hate the eight. Okay, so let's get started on the things we got to be able to do. So uh, what we want to be able to do is uh, net the premiums and figure out, by the way, that's why it's a spread because we're spreading the difference right here. That is money out. And that's six. Whoop. That six is money in. And so when we net those two numbers, uh, we find out that this is a debit of seven. Uh, P.S. We should also know that when we have a, a debit, when we have a debit, we pay money, whether it's, you know, th this version or a strata, whatever, that's our max loss. So that's just kind of helpful. When you get the credit, you know the gain, debit, you've got the loss. Uh, we also know, let's put that in there, that, you know, the whole point here is I'm playing between here and here, and then I'm not playing anymore. It's all about floors and ceilings. You know, here is our 175. And now we're uh, being uh, putting in a floor here at uh, 155. Okay, so We've identified it as a spread. We've determined that it's a debit. Once we get debit, we can rock and roll because we know we want to exercise. We want the difference in the premiums to get larger. Hardest part to get. Um, you know, here again, the, the, you know, don't need to you know be an option guru to figure this out. But you know, this is kind of cool because I lowered my out of pocket costs from thirteen to seven. And as we said, the break even is going to be somewhere between these two numbers. But, you know, the point is, it's easier to get seven points of volatility than it is to get, you know, uh, 13 points of volatility. You know, the conversation is not testable. But, you know, we're saying here that we're playing between 15. There's 15 points here. We made or lost. Right, so there's 15 points there to be made or lost. Um, of those uh, 15 points to be made or lost, I just spent uh, seven of those. So as I mentioned, you can either memorize uh, a bunch of stuff, which I think is a mess. You can either memorize that the maximum gain is the difference in the strikes less the net debit, ugh, or you can just understand there's 15 points to be made or lost. And so of those 15 points to be made or lost, you spent seven, so you can eight, make eight. 
you know, the gain and loss always equals the difference in the strikes. So that's kind of, you know, helpful there in terms of, you know, how to do that. You know, again, you can memorize whatever, whatever works. I told you it's a buffet, take what you like, leave what you don't. I just personally think it's easier to just kind of look at this thing and say, oh, uh, Dean made a mistake, by the way. That's the great thing about having a process. When you have a process, you're likely to catch yourself. And uh, here, the spread is even better than I thought because there is 20 points to be made or lost here. And that's why you want to, have to make sure you got a process to kind of uh, catch yourself. And so much better. So the difference in the strikes is 20 minus the seven. And so my max gain is even better. My max gain is 13. So uh, again, after you get the menu done, then you can think about it. The max gain here is when somebody sticks it to me at 155, I have an obligation to buy and I stick it to the next guy at 175. And so here, the max gain, where the gain and the loss always equals the difference in the strikes. And so there's seven and uh, that means we can make 13. All right. So We've identified it as a spread. We've identified it as a spread. All right, things we have to be able to do is we've identified it as a spread. We've determined it's a debit. We've determined uh, exercise and widen. That goes together all the time. We've got our max gain of 13 and our max loss of seven. Again, 10 contracts, but you'll multiply once when you're all done. So this would be seven times 10 times 107,000, 13,000. But you do that later on. And you take it out of your, your exam question and put it on your scratch so you can make analysis. So, you know, this might say, you know, your customer shorts 10 Apple, November 155 puts at six and goes long 10 Apple, November 175 puts at 13. And put it on your scratch paper, stack the strikes like I've done here so you can kind of make your analysis. Okay, break even, we're going to use push. And uh, PUSH stands for PUT, SUBTRACT FROM THE HIGHER. PUT, SUBTRACT FROM THE HIGHER. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to take the higher strike, which is 175. We're going to minus the net premium, which is seven. We get our break even of 168. Again, not kind of testable as much as it is, you know, the whole point here is it's easier for Apple to go down seven points than it is to go down 13. And that's why I did this spread, right? Is to lower my out-of-pocket cost, therefore lowering my risk, uh, driving the break even closer to me. There's our break even, you know, test taking trick, the break even has got to be somewhere between the two strikes. And then bullish or bearish, because remember, we need to know where we want the stock to go in relationship to this. And uh, here, the larger premium dominates. And so this is going to be a bearish spread because the dominant leg is a long put and long puts are bearish. It'll always be the higher strike put because the higher strike put is always gonna have the greater premium. All right, so uh, I've shown you the eight things you're held accountable for on a spread. This is no substitute for the narrative lectures. This is, I, this is lecture four, advanced option strategies. I'm just trying to pull these out uh, of them and give you some, you know, uh, 20, 30 minute versions of things rather than an hour, hour and a half versions of things. All right, let's clear that up. So uh, by way of review, this is what we've uh, done in the Don't Hate the Eight. Uh, we've uh, gone over the eight things you're held accountable for on the Series 7. Can you identify a spread, long and short, the same type of contract? 
Can you determine debit or credit? Can you determine exercise or expire, widen or narrow? Can you determine max gain, max loss? We said, if you don't know that those two numbers add up to that, I just think it's a mess. We've done one where it was 20, one where it's 15, then you gotta memorize. I'm not even sure I should put this in here, but I will. Just because otherwise somebody will say, well, do you know what is it? Uh, in a credit spread, in the, max gain, the max gain is the credit and the max loss is going to be the difference, the stripes. I credit. I just think it's easier to know, you know, what that is. And in the max gain, we said those two numbers add up to that. But if you don't, then you got to memorize it's the difference. The strikes. Plus the net. Debit. I just think it's easier to know whatever those two numbers are. They add up to fifteen. We used Cal and push, Cal add to the lower, push, put, subtract from the higher. We determine bullish or bearish by the larger premium dominates. We said lower strike coal contracts always have greater premiums. Therefore, the lower strike coal will always be dominant. We said higher strike puts always have greater premiums. And therefore, the higher strike put will always be dominant. And we said you can use that if you're missing premiums to reverse engineer that. Again, I'm trying to keep these under. Uh, 25, 30 minutes. So if you want a more full version, you can go to your uh, the playlist and find the narrative lecture on advanced option strategies. Hope you're finding these little pullouts uh, helpful. If so, let me know because I'll continue on with uh, covered calls and uh, straddles and things like that. Uh, let's see. Oh, there we go. Okay, so uh, like, share, subscribe. We're just uh, past our one-year anniversary on the channel. Uh, if you are in your seven, you have people behind you taking an SIE, please let them know about the channel because we have plenty of SIE content for them. Uh, if you're taking your seven and moving on to your uh, 66 or 63, uh, we have uh, available for you uh, some content there as well. So I uh, hope you had a great holiday season, and I'll see you for the next installment of, I don't know what we call these little things, uh, the pullouts or carve-outs or of the narrative lectures.